I went to the only thing I can call it is the underworld. And I confronted all of my molesters who are now dead and oh, wow. really just unleashed my rage on them. And that's kind of, yeah, that was just one baby part of it, but ooh, crazy. I'll never do that again. But I do think it released a lot of stuff. I mean, I asked my brother afterwards, weren't you scared? Like, were you scared seeing your sister like screaming? Because he said there were, that was screaming. There were guttural sounds coming out of me. He had never heard before. And you know that. And I said, he said, no, because I knew that you were releasing a lot of stuff that you needed to release. So. You are an author. You wrote Kissing Asphalt, which is what I think you're most known for, your your personal story, which is very powerful, but you actually wanted to talk about um, publishers today. Um, your process my, of indie publishing. With the challenges that I had with indie publishing, yeah, they were, there were quite a few challenges, actually, and it's been a, it's been quite a ride. Um, you know, I, I started with a hybrid publisher that cost me quite a bit of money. And, um, I ended up pulling my book from them because of several reasons. Um, but they gave me some really poor advice. And yeah, one of the things was, one of the things that I asked them was I'm having I'm having issues with the ending of my book. And do I end it this way or do I not end it this way? And they basically told me, oh, we had a whole meeting with the entire staff. Everybody loves the ending. They want you to keep it that way. And then late, I'm a first time author. And <clears throat> most of the reading that I've done in my life has been self-help books and, and memoirs and autobiographies. But um, I... I found out later after it was published that you're not supposed to end a memoir with a cliffhanger. <laughs> and I'm like, I didn't know that. So I, I'm just calling myself raw and edgy now. So <laughs> I'm a raw and edgy memoir author. I ended it with a cliffhanger. I didn't know, you know, because there's, um, there's three books in the series. Okay. So the series, the entire series is called resilient AF so I, I ended it with a cliffhanger and some people are really not digging that. So it's um, I, I, now what we're trying to do, I've switched over to, they're not really a hybrid publisher. They're sort of an indie publisher and they've been great um, as far as the publishing side of things goes and helping me learn. And I would definitely recommend um utilizing one of those services the first time around for sure but i'm learning now i just started publishing these little books these little offshoot self-help books because i have crohn's disease and so the first one i i did was i think like a week and a half ago called strength in the storm how to battle uh autoimmune disease pain and and pain in general chronic pain and flare-ups with pain um, and how to basically, hopefully, uh, avoid them to begin with. So I talk a lot about meditation and I just, it's a lot of self stuff that I've learned over the years throughout dealing with the Crohn's disease. And I decided I'm going to pu publish my own little book and I'm going to learn how to do the indie publishing through my own little kind. I did it under a, um, a, a surname. I think that's what it's called, right? Um, a pen name yes I did under a pen name just because I kind of wanted it separate and I didn't really want it associated with the with the resilient AF series of books so um, but I found it really interesting when I went into the Amazon and I went in to do the publishing part that the royalties are much much higher than even with the independent publisher, like they take 15%, but it seems like the royalties are lower to begin with for some reason. So it's quite interesting. And Amazon had two different levels. One was like a 35%. The other one was 70%. And 
And the other thing I didn't know that this this first publisher who shall remain nameless um, was they they were trying to get me to pay in advance for printing books. <clears throat> and that's a big no, no. Like you don't have to do that. I learned when I called the independent publisher, she was like, what? They want you to give you how much? Like, and that's a big part of the reason why I got out of the contract because I actually work for a printer. So that was the, my whole time. I was like, I have the right to print my own books. And when it came down to it, they said, we're not going to distribute it if you're going to print your own books. And I'm like, my books are $3 cheaper per book than what you're wanting to charge me, you know? And, and then on top of that, you make less. So it was just a big um, learning curve, a big learning curve. And I just, yeah, it, it, it's been challenging. It's been challenging, but I ended up, like I said, I ended up pulling my book and I went to this other independent one. They've been super helpful, but like with these little indie series that I'm doing, I'm learning that I could be making so much more on my own book series, but it's okay because my end goal is to to get a movie produced out of the series. And mm -hmm. so I'm hoping that this independent publisher can help me with that. They've already got a couple of books. So I figure I'm going to learn the independent side on my own with my little self-help book series. So <clears throat> I'm, I'm learning a lot about that and, and the difference in, how much you can make. And it's been really challenging. And the other challenging part, which I didn't realize was so expensive and cost so much was advertising. And I also didn't realize that every time you see something in the top 10 or whatever, usually in articles or things like people pay for that. You know, it's not, it's not like, oh, they chose your book. No, you pay for that. So it again, it's unfortunately and sadly, and it's heartbreaking for indie authors like me, like the rich get richer, right? So if you can pay to advertise your book and put it out there, that's when you get to be a number one New York Times bestseller. That's when you get to be known. And for me, I really, truly, from the bottom of my heart, I just want to be known. I want to help people. I just want to show people that we're all inherently resilient AF and that we can all get through whatever is thrown at us in life and that we're all strong. And through my books, I want to show people that no matter what you've been through, they can look at my life and say, holy crap, like this girl has dealt with so much. And if she can get through it, so can I. And that's, that's what I want to do. I want to inspire people. And it's really unfortunate that, I mean, I spent, I spent upwards of 30 grand on my first book for advertising, for editing, for everything. Cause I wanted it to be perfect and I wanted it to help people. You know, I don't have that to spend on my second book. So I'm just, you know, hoping that, <clears throat> hoping that people love it as much as the ones, it seems like people either love or hate my book. So, uh, you know, the, the ones that it helps and the ones that love it, great. I hope that it continues to help you because I think the ones that don't really dig it that much are the ones that don't see the happy wrapped up little ending, which it's coming. I promise you it's coming, but it's not going to come until the third book, which my, my goal with these books is Kissing Asphalt is out right now. And the audiobook has actually just come out, and I read the audiobook myself. So um, it's out on Barnes and Noble, but it's not out on Amazon yet. It should be in the next couple of weeks. And then um, <clears throat> the next book, Not My Circus, I plan the release date is March 6th. So that should be out soon. And oh, what I was saying earlier is that my my new editor has helped me in terms of like the other big thing that my editor did. <laughs> the whole publishing company never told me before is to put a trigger warning on it. Mm -hmm. And what ha it's, a, I don't, it's, it's triggered a few people. So I didn't even think about that, honestly, until my PR person read it and she got triggered. And I was like, Oh, 
no. And so when I switched my new, the independent publisher was like, yeah, absolutely. You need a trigger warning on there. So that was really important and really huge and a really big faux pas. And the other big faux pas they did, which thank goodness I work for a printer, but they gave me the cover and the, the guts a, a different size. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I printed my own books. I printed a thousand books that I can sign for people and send off. And my, my, the printer that I work for <clears throat> luckily was able to fix the covers so that it fit the guts, but oh, nice. the guts were already pre-printed on a web press. So yeah, it was a big, big faux pas that I ran into and have a huge learning experiences, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. um, yeah, but back to what I was saying, the third book is going to be coming out. Um, my goal is to have it out by my mom's birthday, September 4th of this year. So my goal is to have the entire series out this year and give people their ha pretty little happy wrapped up ending because there is one. So that's all I can tell you right now, but there is one and I'm happy. Okay, I want you, Delisha, to tell us, give us a brief, because some people might not know uh, your backstory, and it is very powerful. So can you just give us a brief overview and explain um, why you're speaking about resilience and how it means so much to you? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Um, when I was four years old, I was kidnapped by my father and taken to Baghdad, Iraq. Um, and we were there for almost a year. I didn't speak English when I, my mom finally got us back after fighting with the FBI and the CIA and like all these different attorneys. She finally found an attorney in Baghdad who was willing to help her. And wow. as you know, I mean, as soon as he got us across Iraqi lines, she lost all rights to us so it was a fight and everybody always a that's like that movie not without my daughter and I'm like yeah but it was before that so it was sort of a, and that was in Iran but same concept mm -hmm. but that's just chapter one of my book once <laughs> my mom yeah once my mom gets us back you know I I spend a lot of my my young childhood looking for a father figure Mm -hmm. And I think I find one who ends up molesting me and, you know, I, I'm molested until I'm 12 on a pretty regular basis by this man. Um, the chapter in that book is called Trustworthy Monster Number One. Mm. So, and it's, I did it in sections. Um, that's the other thing people don't seem to like is it's not linear, but I couldn't do it linearly. It wasn't possible because of the way that my trauma and the memories work. Um, and I would even have times where I'd be writing and then things would start flashing back to me in little chunks, you know? And so it was interesting how that, how that all came about, but um, it made me realize how resilient I was. Everybody always told me that in life, but I was just like, eh, you know, you don't know what you don't know. So when you're a little kid and you grow up in this trauma household that is completely dysfunctional, but you don't know it because you don't know anything else, you know, mm -hmm. and you just think that's normal. And honestly, I, I kid you not, it wasn't until my new independent publisher told me we need to change the tagline or the subtitle of the book, and it needs to include the word abuse. And my reaction was like, why i wasn't abused but, <laughs> but but then i realized uh yeah you were and it was it was it was really wasn't until 52 years old that i realized that yeah i had a lot of abuse in my life and not just sexual but like physical abuse from my mom emotional abuse from my mom you know abuse from my brother not be, not including me you know being bullied I mean there's a lot that I dealt with and there's some things I didn't write in the book like that I, I kind of regret I probably should have but I I was so resilient as a child that I would be bullied at school all day long and 
let's say it was raining and I would walk home from school and instead of being sullen and sad, I would sing and dance, singing in the rain by Gene Kelly and like spin around with my umbrella and dance around by myself in the street. And, you know, to me, that's resilience. To me, mm -hmm. it's about knowing who you are and even as a little kid, I had that in me. Where it came from, I don't know. Yeah, you've been through quite a lot, quite a lot. And it's amazing that you're here to share this story with everyone so that we can see that there is a way out, that there yeah. is a way through. And it hasn't been easy. I mean, you'll see in the second book, there's more and probably the biggest trauma of my life that happens. It's is going to come out. So I might as well say my mother was murdered oh. um, when I was 30. So that's the second book is called Not My Circus. And I called it that because my entire life, my goal was to, um, my goal was to be a judge. I went to school for that. <clears throat> and it wasn't until I was sitting <clears throat> in the courtroom watching my mother's murderer testify that it hit me that was a complete and total circus and i didn't want that to be any part of my life and i was 30 years old and i had to reevaluate everything that i had worked for all the money that i put into school like everything that i had worked for and done up to that point i felt like wow okay and then I ended up producing film and television after that, but yeah, I have made a big leap. But um, the third book you'll see that, you know, coming to the point where I'm at now wasn't easy. And it takes you through my journey of plant medicines and different healing modalities and breath work and my trips to Sedona and all of the different things that I've done after I realized wow, like I've got stuff that needs to be worked on because I had really pushed it away for so long. I was in denial for so long. And people would ask me, you were kidnapped and taken to Baghdad? That must have been so traumatic, you know? And my response was always, well, I don't know. I was three, I was four, you know? I don't, I don't remember, you know? But I do, I do actually remember, my body remembers and it wasn't until 2019 I read the book called um, The Body Keeps the Score. I don't know if you've heard of it mm -hmm. by Bessel van der Kolk. And it talks about how trauma is stored in your body and how it comes out as different, different things. And I've, I've had Crohn's disease since I was, you know, 23. So that's how it has really come out in my body. And I, and I went back and this is some of the stuff in the third book is when I did my breath work, I was actually able to go back in time with my little girl and my memories in my mind. And it was so real that I could smell the smells of my grandma's cooking. I could feel the walls in the house. And I was able to go back in time with my little girl. And I was able to see that for the entire year that I was there in Baghdad, my whole body was just tight, my whole, and I held everything in my belly and in my, and I felt it there. And it was like, wow, okay, this was the beginnings of, of why I suffer from Crohn's disease, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was really important to, to do all that work and get through it so that you can see what you have to work on and do the work. So getting through, it's not easy, that's for sure. And yeah, you definitely have to do the work, but it's so worth it in the end. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So this is, when is the third book? Okay, so only your first book is out right now? Yeah, and the second book, Not My Circus, should be out March 6th. Okay, and then September. My, that's my birthday. And then <laughs> um, my goal for the third book is September 4th, which is my mom's birthday. So yeah. I'm trying to do it on significant days just because, you know, whatever. Why not? So you're publishing these little spinoff ones on Amazon? Is that yeah, one? under the name Savannah Wise, because I always like the name Savannah and because Wise is just smart. So, you know, it's just little self-help books like the, this one. Um, the first one I did, I told you about. And then the second one I want to do is a little bit they're kind of obscure, but they're really kind of 
about my life in a way, I guess. Um, so in the third book in 2020, in the height of COVID, August 5th, my colon ruptured. Oh, and I have a colostomy bag for life now. And so I was thinking about it and there's not anything on Amazon. So I want to do a book on having sex with an ostomy and how to do it safely. I mean, because I know there's people that need to learn about that. I mean, that's it's like it's funny to some, but it's serious to others. You know what I mean? Like that's something that I've grappled with and struggled with and body image is huge at that point so I want to do a, a chapter on body image and a chapter on how I accepted my bag and how I call myself poop wonder woman now like I can I can poop when I'm dancing I can poop when I'm <laughs> cooking I can poop, poop when I'm having a conversation with somebody and nobody knows you know so it's like I've had to take a really positive spin on it because at first it was yeah yeah it was yeah. really yeah tough yeah. you know but this is this is resilience at its best right and that's why my series is called resilient af because i realized and it actually was my sister from another mister who suggested that title for my first book and i thought that's a really great name for the entire series and it's amazing to 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 finally see yourself the way that others see you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's really yeah. empowering yeah, I just hope that I can help people with that and empower others. Where do where can people get a hold of you so they can, um, you know, be helped by you? Yeah, absolutely. I have a website. It's kissingasphalt.com or resilientafmemoir.com. They kind of take you to the same place. And right now, actually, I'm offering um, bonus chapters if you do a little sign up. So get on my mailing list and um, you'll get the first two chapters in Not My Circus, which is sort of the conclusion to the cliffhanger of the first book. So my for, my indie publisher is going to try and help me help me <clears throat> put that out on Amazon as well. So sign up here and then get the bonus chapters so people feel like it's a little more complete, you know, Yeah, because it does end pretty gruff, but I... I was trying to hook people instead of just <laughs> piss people off. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, I think with the other two coming out, they should be excited so they can finish the whole thing. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. You know, and like I said, the people that it helps, I'm so grateful for. I've always said, like, if I could just help one person with this, it's so worth it. And I know that I already have because people have reached out to me and it's really... I'm not a crier, but every single time I know that I help people, I just can't, I just, I feel like, you know, you're always wondering what your calling in life is and like, why am I here on this planet? And why did I have to put up with all this shit, you know? And I think this is it. I think it's because I'm here to help people on like a bigger scale. And that makes me, it just, it makes me so happy that I'm able to turn my tragedy into beautiful help for others I, I yeah I just I and I hope that I'm able to do it you know and I'm hope that whoever I can touch with it I want to be able to touch and I want to welcome anybody who wants to email me or ask questions I'm very open to that that's amazing that's amazing thank you so much thank you for being here and sharing all of this with everyone and for opening up your life because that is that's what you did you opened up your life so that other people can learn to heal their lives that's, that's beautiful that was the goal it was a scary scary thing to be so vulnerable and put as much as i put out there i just did the tip of the iceberg i just did things that like were the highlights basically yeah. yeah i think it'll be very empowering for people to see everything that i've been through and and i think that's really how you reach the masses right so that's why i would really like to see that happen because that once you once you do that then your name gets out there and and then people are people are interested and people watch and then it helps them hopefully hopefully that's my yeah. main goal in this whole thing is to help people. Even with my little sideline health, self-help books is they're all going to be about self-help and how to, how to, you know, help mostly I think with what I've dealt with in my life. So 
Crohn's disease, the colostomy bag, things like that, you know, and I might even do a little one on plant medicine and that kind of thing, you know, so I mean, that's something that people are interested in as well. So I've done yeah. quite a bit of that, including what's well, not plant medicine, but it's the craziest thing I've ever done, which is DMT. Oh. Yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say, how was it? Uh, <laughs> your face. I write about it in my third book, but yeah, the trip lasted about four days. But apparently, my brother was in there with me, and he said that he thought the cops were gonna come. That it it sounded like a triple homicide was going on, and oh, yeah, goodness. the only thing I've been able to like recollect from that is that I went to the only thing I can call it is the underworld, and I confronted all of my molesters who are now dead and wow. really just unleashed my rage on them and that's kind of yeah that was just one baby part of it but oh crazy I'll never do that again but I do think it released a lot of stuff I mean I asked my brother afterwards weren't you scared like were you scared seeing your sister like screaming because he said there were that was screaming there were guttural sounds coming out of me he had never heard before and you know that and I said he said no because I knew that you were releasing a lot of stuff that you needed to release so wow okay <laughs> you know but never again I'll never do that again but... it was powerful it was worth it but not happening again <laughs> ayahuasca is something I'll never do either it's something my body holds huge red flags no 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 so I listen to my body you know, plant medicine is super important to listen to your body because some of that can be really scary. Yeah. You know, but yeah. yeah. And I got to be careful when I write about that stuff because I don't want to like encourage people. I'm just trying to tell them my experience with it, you know? <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. I'll work on that this week and get it over to you. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank I'll, you. I'll I look forward to talking to you soon. All right. Have a good day. You too. Bye. Bye. -bye. The Zarlaquan Indieverse.